Chapter 5 The Narayanpur Incident Manju had just settled down with a book when she was startled by Babu's urgent hiss, almost in her ear. Manju, I say Manju. Listen, I'm going out. Want to come with me? Where? I'll tell you later. If you want to come, just say so and come quickly. The college students are taking out a procession from their college to the collector's office. Mohan told me we could watch. He says it's going to be peaceful. There were already some people lining the roads. Manju and Babu found a good spot. They had to wait for some time in the rain. Manju and Babu sheltered themselves under a large tamarind tree. Soon they heard the procession approaching. Policemen appeared all along the road, but the students marched as if the police didn't exist. There were no slogans, no shouts, just the shuffle of feet. Babu and Manju looked eagerly for Mohan. Yes, there he was, holding aloft a picture of the Mahatma. His arms must have ached holding it up that way for so long, but his face was expressionless. The leaders of the procession had reached the barred gates. A police officer came up to them. The students seemed to be arguing. Once he laughed, showing all his teeth. But the students remained serious. One of them handed him a piece of paper. He took it without glancing at it and nodded. The students turned their backs on him and one of them shouted, Mahatma Gandhi ki jai! Mahatma Gandhi ki jai! Mahatma Gandhi ki jai! The others shouted back loudly. And then they briskly marched back the way they had come. Is that all? Manju asked in disappointment. What else did you want? A dance? A drama? Babu asked scornfully. Nevertheless, he asked Mohan the same question when he returned home. Why did you go back so quietly? Were you scared of what the police would do? Scared? Not by a long shot. We had planned it this way. We knew they expected us to protest and be violent, so that they could beat us up and haul us away to jail. But we are not prepared to go to jail, not until we have given them much more trouble. And so, we decided we would give them no chance at all. What was the point then? Babu asked, while Manju listened earnestly, her chin cupped in her hands. It's like a declaration war. We've told them now. This is war for us, and you are the enemy. That was the notice we served to the collector, as a representative of His Majesty's government, asking them to quit India or face the consequences. Suman and another boy turned up after they had finished their dinner that night. The boy staggered in with a large newspaper-covered parcel in his hands. Got it? Mohan asked, his voice tense with excitement. Yes, lot of trouble though. Where shall I take it? Here, let me help you. My room, okay, Amma? No, I think the puja room is better. A light there will look more normal. The boy went away. Then Suman, Amma and Mohan went into the small puja room. Babu and Manju stared curiously over their shoulders at the mysterious parcel, which turned out to be a cyclo-styling machine. Babu, Mohan said as they settled down to work. Sit out in the front room and keep watch. Give us a warning if anyone seems to be coming to our house. Manju, go to bed or else. He went on noticing her crestfallen face. You sit here in the hall and pass on Babu's warning to us. As soon as Babu sat outside, alert and attentive, he saw a man riding a bike stop and get off right outside their gate. Babu flung himself inside. Manju turned a startled face to him. Someone's coming in. There was silence from inside the puja room. Three faces looked at him blankly, the dim light giving them a peculiar look. Then Amma got up and came out, followed by Mohan. Suman stayed inside and Mohan closed the door of the room. Manju, go to bed. Babu, you too. There was a knock at the door. A knock again. Who is there? Amma called out. Knock, knock. Mohan, go and see who it is. 
Mohan came in saying, Amma, it's Patil, the sub inspector. Amma held Manju's hand in a tight, hurtful clutch, though her voice was still cool and calm. What does he want? He wants to talk to you. To me? The hand relaxed. Manju drew her own hand back and rubbed it softly. Amma got up quickly and went out. Manju waited a moment and followed her. There was Babu coming out of his room, making a show of having woken up out of deep sleep, rubbing his eyes, yawning loudly and repeatedly, mumbling in a grumpy voice. Who is it? Who is it? I haven't come to trouble you. A strange voice said. Your husband was my friend in school. I'm a friend. We were in school together. Oh, he was far above me. He always helped me, though. God knows how often I would have been caned but for him. Please, Patil Sahib, Amma said, rather impatiently. Tell me why you are here. Suddenly the man was brisk and businesslike. His glance swept over all of them, taking them all in shrewdly. There's going to be a search in your house. When? Most probably tonight. I heard the staff talking. They were speaking of a cyclostyling machine, it seems. You people are making copies of the Mahatma's speech. They say you have people hiding there as well. Huh? <laughs> Mohan scoffed. But you have the cyclostyling machine? No. Mohan said instantly. Have you? The man asked Amma. Yes, Amma replied simply, and Mohan made an angry hissing sound. Where is it? Inside. Manju's heart began beating wildly. Why was Amma giving them away? Give it to me. I'll get it out of the way. You can have it when it's safe. Mohan burst out. Amma, what are you doing? How can you trust a policeman? The man touched Mohan on the shoulder. Mohan, you're still very young. There are many things you don't understand. Though I am a policeman, yet your father was and still is my friend. And this is my country as much as it is yours. Now give it to me quickly. Amma opened the door of the puja room and said, Suman! Suman emerged, looking anxiously at them. Come in. Amma beckoned to the man. It's here. Suman stared at Amma and the man in bewilderment. Amma smiled at her and said, You have got to get away, Suman. Take away all that material. Mohan, will you? Okay, Amma, Mohan said and dug into the puja room. He lugged the machine out and gave it to Patil. And then they were gone, Patil, Mohan and Suman. The house seemed unbelievably quiet after the earlier intense activity. Mohan came back shortly. Suman? Manju asked anxiously. She's all right. Let's go back to bed, Amma suggested. Bed? With the police about to come. Nevertheless, she did drop off at some time and came out of her sleep with a jerk to hear a loud knock at the door. It was repeated. Manju sat up in sudden fright. Amma patted her comfortingly. Who is it? she asked loudly. Open the door, a strange voice ordered. Mohan, see who it is, Amma said. It was like going through something all over again, but this time they knew for sure it wasn't a friend standing out there. No need for Mohan to announce. Amma, it's the police. From the Narayanpur Incident by Shashi Deshpande, adapted. Shuffle to walk slowly without lifting one's feet completely off the ground. Aloft, in the air or in a higher position. Bad, closed with a long piece of wood. Briskly, quickly. Scornfully, in a way that shows that you think someone or something is of no value or not deserving respect, usually in the manner you speak. By a long shot, idiom, at all. Hall. To pull something or somebody with a lot of effort. Earnestly, in a very serious and sincere manner. Staggered, walked or moved unsteadily, as if about to fall. 
साइक्लो स्टाइलिंग मशीन अ मशीन यूज टू मेक कॉपीज ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स यूजिंग स्टेंसिल एंड इंक क्रेस्ट फॉलन सैड एंड डिसअपॉइंटेड बिकॉज ऑफ फॉलोइंग अनएक्सपेक्टेडली स्कॉफ्ड टॉक्ड अबाउट समबडी और समथिंग इन अ मॉकिंग और स्कॉनफुल वे बेकंद made a sign or gesture with your hand or head to tell them to come nearer or to follow you bewilderment a feeling of being thoroughly confused